Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another great episode of On the Throttle with Jackie Van Ham and my buddy Josh, bringing you all the newest news going on out here in motorcycles and power sports. I am fresh back from an awesome week out at AIM Expo Motorcycle Trade Show out in Las Vegas. I had a blast. Huge thanks to several of the folks that we stopped by and shot video with, um, including Segway Power Sports US, another cool product and company called Fluid Live. Logic. We also stopped by the e-bike company Quiet Cat and chatted with a whole bunch more people out there. We had a great time. So for today's episode, all sorts of news going on out here in motorcycling. I am going to be talking about a brand new way for you to get juiced up. And no, I'm not talking about delicious energy drinks. I'm also going to be talking about some more drama going on over in Northern Ireland. And Josh, what do you have going on for your stories? So, of course, it's going to be a middleweight adventure bike, but another one goes racing, and this one's going to be super surprising. And we are going to dive a little bit into the world of trials because there's some new bikes that just came out that I want to talk about, too. Awesome. No surprises there. Dirt bikes, dirt bikes, dirt bikes for Mr. Correct. Josh. But we're going to have to wait for those stories and more after this word from our sponsor. From the trails to the track, DID chains are manufactured with the highest quality materials and designed to give you an optimal riding experience and are the top chain choice worldwide. When performance, quality, and consistency matter, go with DID. What drives you? Well, welcome back. As promised, lots of great stories going on today. And we had talked really quickly before the show started, and Josh is going to give me a ton of grief for it. But I brought back one of my favorite products from AIM Expo. I'm going to give them a shameless shout out because I thought these were so cool. Uh, these are from the company Clean Freak. And yes, they are exactly what they say. These are body wipes. I know, which is a little bit of TMI. But if you ride motorcycles, you know you get sweaty and dirty out there. I thought these were super awesome. They're all natural ingredients, and they're biodegradable, one of the first companies I've ever seen do that. And it isn't just me, Josh, who was picking on me before the show for my love of wipes. Uh, Josh rides dirty and does not partake of such things, but I camp her van as well. What's that? It's human repellent. It keeps people away from me. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Josh prefers to roll stinky and dirty. Uh, I like to wipe myself off out there. Anyway, wanted to give them a little bit of love. I thought that was a really neat product. And like I said, we saw lots of cool stuff out at AIM. Thanks again for everybody who came on out and stopped by and visited us over at the MPN booth. We shot tons of video. We will have some of those products as Ride the Week. We will have some great interviews that we'll be rolling into the show here at On the Throttle. So make sure you go ahead, hit that notifications on the subscribe, the likes, the things, the stuff. Take a second, share this video with your buddies because they're not going to want to miss out on those stories and all of our weekly great topics that we talk about every single week here on the program. Episode 70. Welcome back if you're a regular watcher, if you're a new viewer. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I've got two massive, huge stories that I want to talk about today. They are very involved. They are quite complicated. Make a snack, grab yourself something to drink and buckle up because these are some big stories going on for today for my neck of the woods, especially. And my first story that I wanted to jump into, we covered a little bit of it last spring. Josh and I touched on it real briefly, and it was talking about the use of hydrogen power in the motorcycling space. And what that story was that we chatted about last spring is the fact that Bosch, the German um, electric electronics company, Bosch, went ahead and announced that they are sinking a ton of money into hydrogen power. Bosch was investing, announced that they're investing $1.3 billion with a B in hydrogen technology by 2025, which is coming up very, very, very quickly. Now, the reason why that story caught my eye is because that's a huge chunk of money and not it's not particularly headed towards motorcycles and power sports, which is what we focus on here on the On the Throttle program. But it is interesting to me because it means there's a potential of that trickling on down. So today's story, which just hit the news this past week, is the fact that Honda also has announced that they are climbing into bed and providing hydrogen technology and hydrogen research and development with the folks over at General Motors. That's what just hit the internet this past week. So the story is Honda teams up with GM to take the next step in hydrogen fuel cell technology. 
And the thing uh, or the graphic on your screen you can see right now comes directly from Honda and their press release because this is their game plan. They're going to be developing fuel cell systems that they're going to be used for their cars, trucks, for huge commercial vehicles, for stationary power stations, which I thought was really interesting, and then construction machinery. Construction machinery needs a lot of juice, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Commercial vehicles, they're talking about that last mile, which is what you hear a lot in transportation, because the biggest chunk of transportation where they use the most amount of juice is actually in that in what's called or referred to as final mile, which is where it gets from like the port, the dock, the train station to where it's actually going like a warehouse and being delivered. So anyway, that's the graphic on your screen right now. But the story this week is Honda in partnership with automotive giant GM have announced the next steps in their research into hydrogen fuel cells, a further indication that battery power is not the only carbon friendly propulsion option for the future. Hydrogen is the most plentiful element in the universe and requires no harmful mining to access it and importantly has almost three times the energy density of fossil fuel. When sourced by the electrolysis of water using renewable energy, such as that from solar panels, it is completely carbon neutral, only producing water as a byproduct from combustion, in addition, in addition to plentiful electricity in a fuel cell. The move is the latest in the company's goal to be carbon neutral in all its operations by 2050 and will see the introduction of their next generation fuel cell jointly developed with GM next year. The model to be released in Japan and North America will be based on the CRV hybrid SUV as Honda's focus has been and remains four wheelers and larger construction vehicles. However, their discoveries could help other companies attempting to bring the tech to two wheels. The major drawback with hydrogen is that as as a gas, it requires requires too much space on board the vehicle to be practical, but fuel cell vehicles use highly pressurized gas molecules of between 5,000 and 10,000 PSI, which demand less space, but make refueling potentially more difficult. At a recent Motorcycle Industry Association conference, the CEO of Zemo Partnership, who worked with government to work towards carbon net zero targets, said hydrogen was being investigated for use in heavy goods vehicles, but claimed it would be difficult to store on a motorcycle unless major technological breakthroughs are made. Last year, however, Toyota came up with a solution which could pave the way for motorcycles to use the technology. Replaceable cartridges that are safely used and refilled and simply slot into place and off you go, similar to the current battery technology that we are using today on motorcycles. Kawasaki unveiled their idea of a hydrogen-based future at the Eichmann trade show in Milan this past year, with this variation using the pressurized gas as a replacement for fossil fuels in a supercharged combustion engine based on the Ninja H2. Ten hydrogen, cast, ten hydrogen canisters excuse me, are carried in the prototype panniers where it is directly injected into the cylinders. No production date has been released, but that was the green bike in the slides, Ash, if you want to go ahead and throw that up there. That's the Kawasaki uh, prototype that was revealed at ICMA that they were talking about. How cool is that? So what they are talking about is that there's a whole bunch of canisters in those bags on the backside of that bike. And then, Ashley, you'll see an engine graphic in there as well. And this is the actual engine that they're planning on using from Kawasaki. So this is real this is a thing this is coming and why this is interesting to me is again like i just mentioned the fact that toyota is inching even closer to making these kind of swappable cartridges that have highly pressurized hydrogen in them so that way they can be charged at a safe location or at your home or when the infrastructure happens and there's refueling changes like we've mentioned on several times of the show the fact that there's these swappable battery things happening in asia where you drop the battery off into these little kiosks they get charged and then you can pull what you need back out there's is this what's coming is this where we're headed i'm not sure but i think it is terrifically terrifically exciting and i just wanted to talk about it on today's program josh what do you got to say about this fuel cell hydrogen technology going on right now in the marketplace it is a long way off from being anything that's to me what they're talking about so first off when i look at it i mean this is something i've done some a fair bit of research on hydrogen has issues in storage it's difficult to handle it's difficult to refuel because of the pressures i mean the gas nozzle comes out at three or four psi this is i mean these are thousands of psi going into a container and it's difficult to handle with that 
think Hindenburg. Um, the thing that when they the thing that I hate is when they call this carbon neutral and they, they say this is a better alternative to fossil fuels. Currently, it is definitely not, and the big reason being is is it is carbon neutral. One of the most hazardous things that happens with internal combustion engines is you're releasing nitrates, and when you have this, you're releasing these nitrates of oxygen that are naturally occurring in the in the atmosphere, and you're releasing them freely to go out and do damage. On top of that, as of recently, up to 71% of hydrogen production involves natural gas. So when they say hydrogen is uh, is carbon neutral, it, it, you're burning natural gas to do this. So no, it's not. That was a number straight from Forbes actually about six months ago. And the other thing that I just drives me nuts about it is when we've got electric motors, there is the there's one moving part with it. With this, you have all the complexity, all the issues, and all the difficulty of an internal combustion engine, and it, they aren't—they don't create as much power per cc because of that. So now we've got all these things that kind of hamper it. I mean, look, we need to find alternative resources. Sure, it's abundant, but it's not easy to get to. I mean, it, there's there's a ton of problems that we need to solve before I get real excited about it. So that's that's my soapbox two cents. For sure. And I hear you about the infrastructure that has to be caught up with, but battery technology is in the same boat currently. Um, and as the part two of this story that also happened this past week is that 2023 CRV hybrid is now in production. Honda ex um, execs detail hydrogen use plants. So this is coming. This is going yep. to be in this Honda CRV. This is real. And the way that they are planning on, you know, their their big conversation and their big talking point, as you mentioned in your argument about why not, is the fact that they are counting on using a lot of solar power is how they're going to produce this. So that is their that is the way that they are going to handle and skin that cat. And that's why they're comfortable using the phrase carbon neutral. I think it's terrifically exciting. I am a big advocate of solar power as well. I mean, it's the sun. Everybody has it. It's everywhere. Um, but I think that also got the a fact long way that to go. It's, I mean, you're right. This takes all development. <laughs> At one point when the automobile came out, the horse people said, no way, this will never happen. You know, you have to put gas in it. It's dangerous. It's going to catch yep. fire. This is a trend. This is a fad. I'm going to stick with my horse. Now look where we're at a quick, quick 120 years later. So, um, yes, this is a very upcoming technology. This is a bit of the future. They are not, they are talking numbers like 2030 and 2050 as far as some hard dates for this. Yeah. But I still think it's terrifically exciting. And I love anything that is outside of the box thinking. I love the thought process also of swappable batteries. That does it for me. That stokes me out because it's not only applicable to this like hydrogen conversation, but battery conversation as well. I'm a big advocate of it. So that is what's going on as far as some new power news i thought it was really interesting and i yeah. uh, there's a lot of layers going on there's a lot of conversation to be had about it um but that's what's going on for my first story for today josh what do you got going on in your neck of the woods so you brought up the moto marini uh x cape a little while back and they decided when they unveiled it they unveiled the adv dash r version of it because you know everything needs to have an r at the end of it that automatically makes it better <laughs> that i mean that's just golden for everything so that was unveiled at IPMA. right right everything's a pirate <laughs> um so they they decided two weeks ago to roll roll, roll one out of the trailer at the basella <laughs> rally raid space in rally raid race blah, in Spain a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things that I think is so impressive about this is this is obviously, I mean, this is a an Italian company with some Chinese roots. It's using this, the CF Moto engine in it that a lot of others are using in that. Um, with this, it took eighth place in the Maxi Trail class, which is basically the middleweight adventure class. Um, I found that really interesting because some of the other notables that were in that race were Paul Torres on a T7, and there was also a Ducati Desert X in that race. So for it to finish eighth place is pretty remarkable. Now, with this, the ADV-R has... Uh, now I'm going to do it every time. 
Um, it, it has some better suspension travel, courtesy of some Marzocchi front forks. There is an Olin's Roux shock. As you can see here, it has an SC Project titanium exhaust to help it save some grams there. So one of the things that I found I, I, as I was doing my research on this, I actually found two really interesting things with this. So first off, when you look at it, you're like, those wheels are small. And you'd be right. It's running a 19-inch front and a 17-inch 17 17-inch rear. That being said, I found that pretty impressive that they were able to place eighth in this rally raid with that type of setup because that's definitely not the traditional setup. I mean, you're typically looking at a 21 and an 18. So as I started looking at results, I found that this finished in eighth and the top KTM finished in ninth. So to me, that in itself is a Ooh. big statement about what this bike could be capable of. So I am I was initially kind of tentative on seeing this, especially knowing it was the 19 and 17 inch wheel combination. But seeing how it placed, boy, I may need to stick one underneath my butt to see how this rides and see how this works because it is now quite a bit more interesting. I know if I remember right, you saw this thing in person, Jackie. Is that, am I, am I yeah. correct with that? And what were yeah, your thoughts? And I just saw, well, I saw it in person. And then I also saw it in person again, just last week um, at AIM Expo, yeah. they had a display there. It is really good. When I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, I flat out yeah. said, this is one of my favorite ADV bikes of the year. I think it is very cool looking. I love the styling of it. Uh, I'm on board for this bike. I was from the jump. So I love hearing that as far as competition goes, you know, they had a really yeah. good showing out there. Uh, the bike is beautiful. It's even better in person. I did snap a photo of it. Make sure you follow us over over at our MPN social handles. I'll go throw it up in the stories of Instagram. How's that for a good tie-in, right, gang? Um, yeah, go, go go check out our stories. I'll start throwing some pictures up there from uh, AIM, uh, some of these behind the scenes and things. I did think that this was really awesome. So I'm glad that it, it lived up to a little bit of its of its hype. It wasn't yeah. just all show and no go. I'm impressed. I, I'm stoked that they, had, that they had a good turnout. So that's excellent news. Very cool. Very cool. So my second story for today, again, another bit of a plot twist, lots of things going on with this story. It just keeps developing. As always, we love to bring you the breaking news here on the show. So this has got more layers than an onion, but let's go ahead and dive in and talk about it. And this is going to be a story that hit the news a couple of weeks ago. Got a lot of my friends into a bit of an uproar, especially my overseas friends, because the Northwest 200, which is a very important historical road race in Northern Ireland, organizers have not given up the fight amid, amid mass cancellations. And the reason why they have not given up the fight is because the Motorcycle Union of Ireland announced that they are cutting road racing in Northern Ireland because of extreme pricing of insurances. So this um, motorcycle organization, similar to like, I guess, the AMA here in the US, so they oversee a lot of the racing that happens they had this crazy price hike and they just flat out said that road racing is canceled for 2023 then that's where the story gets even more interesting because they said well this also might trickle over into dirt racing for 2023 so really in essence like two weeks ago when the story first broke everybody was like there's going to be no racing in 2023 in Northern Ireland, which is crazy because, again, this Northwest 200 is this very historical road race that's going, been going on for over 90 years. It is the second, in my mind, largest, most historical road race next to that other road race you might have heard of called the Isle of Man TT. So this is a huge, big Deal. Let's go ahead and get on into it. The Northwest 200 organizers have not given up the fight amid mass cancellations. Um, they have not given up the fight to stage the event in 2023, despite all road races in Northern Ireland being canceled due to insurance costs. The Motorcycle Union of Ireland announced via a statement this past week that due to a tripling in the price of public liability insurance costs of running the road race events in northern ireland has become unsustainable following a crisis meeting the governor the governing body announced that all road racing and short circuit contests in northern ireland have been canceled for 2023 a statement from motorcycle ireland on the matter pointed the finger at the effects of Brexit as having contributed to the problem. The Northwest 200 is Northern Ireland's biggest outdoor sporting event 
period, and has run for almost 100 years, with the race contributing over 15 million pounds to the local economy. Prior to Thursday's announcement, the future of Northwest 200 following the 2022 edition was uncertain, with more funding from Tourism Northern Ireland requested to keep the event running. Despite all of this, organizers say they are pushing ahead with its plans to stage the 2023 Northwest 200 on the 7th through the 13th of May. So that just happened, but here's where the plot twist also steps up. So just more recently, within the past two to three days, crowdfunding has been organized to save road racing in Northern Ireland. A GoFundMe page has been set up by the MCUI to try to help uncover the road racing insurance shortfall. A GoFundMe page has been set up over the weekend, aiming to help plug the gap in accounts to help save Irish road racing in 2023. So they have set a goal of 300,000 pounds in order to save road racing across the board for 2023. Currently it sits at about, when I checked it last night, it was close to like 80,000 80, um, pounds. So they still have a bit of a gap to cover, but they there's conversation about this possibly being able to save the Northwest 200, which they still have not officially announced as completely canceled on their page. So they are still hoping to keep it alive. That 300,000 would save all of the road races, including yet another historical race that was just announced. Spiraling insurance costs claim another well-known race. This is another race that has been axed from the calendar. This is the Dunlop Masters Championship 2023 will not be taking place. So like dominoes, all of these massive races is going on in Northern Ireland are on the chopping block. So we're all going to have to wait and see. This is very, very much breaking news. Currently, a little bit of a feel good story is that people are jumping at and attempting to save these races. So if you are feeling like stepping on up and have an extra little bit of money in your pocket and want to help donate, you can head over to GoFundMe and go track down that page. Again, this is to save road racing in Northern Ireland for 2023, including the super well-known Northwest 200. So that is my story for today. Josh, are you familiar with the story? Have you been following it? Are you familiar with Northwest 200? I, I know of these races and that, and it's, I mean, obviously Ireland's not a country that is as much on the map as some of the other races, but in the same sense with this, it's, I mean, obviously there's, we're in a changing world and so many things have changed with this. Uh, to me, there's obviously some holes there that uh, we need the little Dutch boy for to come over to Ireland and uh, plug some holes in the dam to see what happens with that. It would be great if they could get a large sponsor to step up that could write a bigger chunk of that check and be like, hey, put our name everywhere and ta-da. I don't know rules and regulations of that over there, but hopefully someone can step up with a pretty big checkbook and a lot of other smaller checkbooks can save it. Yeah, that and then the other back end of the story is, you know, not only is it losing, uh, you know, basically in essence, like it's it would be the same as if we lost, lost Moto America. It would be the same as if we lost, you know, a World Superbike. It is that kind of level. There's that kind yeah. of racing going on in Northern Ireland. An awful lot of folks use it as their stepping stone to get into the World Superbike stages or to get into yeah. British Superbike stages and so forth and so on. So this is quite a big deal. This is really um, quite a story going on. As you mentioned, hopefully somebody steps up with big pockets. The other part of the story is the fact that there's a lot of places in Northern Ireland that count on these races to make their money. All yes. of these pubs, all of these hotels, all of these restaurants, all of these smaller mom and pop businesses that are really going to take a beating if they don't have this road racing happen on the calendar. So again, if anybody out there is watching and feels like sponsoring road racing in Northern Ireland, make sure you head on over to their websites and uh, maybe consider, you know, cutting, cutting a check, you know, maybe consider helping them out a little bit. Um, myself, I am going to absolutely go in and, and throw in, you know, at least 20 bucks or so um, over to that gun, GoFundMe page. Uh, it's the right thing to do to save some, save, save some awesome racing going on in Northern Ireland. So sure. that's my second story. Josh, what do you got going on for your second story today? I am going to take us to trials land because beta just released the Evo factory models and the factory models basically take your Evo trial trials bikes and like other factory bikes, step them up that little bit of notch. So there are a, uh, what is it? Quintuplet? There's four. There's four two strokes. There's one four stroke. Um, we've got the 125. We've got the 200, 250, and 300 in the two strokes. In the four stroke, there is a 300cc version. The two strokes are going to range from 
$81.99 to $89.99. Now, as I said, the factory designation has a whole bunch of steps up in parts, and they did this across the board in a lot of them. I've got a good example. If you're not familiar with Trials Bikes, these things look like aliens, but when you realize why they look like this, it starts to make sense. So um, on the 250 and 300, there is a 1.5 millimeter shorter crank and rod setup because they wanted to get rid of some of that weight. They have maintained the stroke with it and they were able to increase compression by changing the cylinder on it. Um, it also has a new titanium header pipe. On the 304 stroke, it gets a new titanium muffler for better power and it gets a one pound weight reduction. So if you don't know much about trials bikes and why they look like this, a trials bike, typically a good trials bike will come in under 150 pounds. So if you can take a pound Ooh. off of that, that is one heck of a weight reduction. I mean, me, I would just probably not eat the cheeseburger, but yes, this makes, this makes more sense. <laughs> It's easier to get the titanium muffler than it is to not eat the cheeseburger. On yeah, all definitely of them, eat the cheeseburger. You, yeah, yeah. On all of them, you see here the gold nitrided upper uh, fork tubes. If you know the process to gold nitride something, it is an extensive process. It is done with electroplating in a vacuum chamber. I have been at a facility that does this. When you see how it happens and you see what they have to go through to do something like this, you're in, you're blown away. It's done in clean rooms that are like computer chip level clean rooms, which is absolutely awesome. It's mind blowing. Um, in this, the uh, internal dampening is also set up differently to reduce harshness on harshness on big impacts. And when it's going downhill, it also is so the fork rides higher in its travel. Um, to me, I've always loved trials bikes. I've had a chance to hop on one or two. Um, what I mean, just an amazing way to improve your skills. And not only that, you can have the tiniest backyard on the planet and still have a boat ton of fun on a trials bike. Um, these things are just meant to just do dumb stuff on at slow speeds. And that's why I love them so much. Um, if, if, if it's about doing dumb stuff, I am going to love it. So and when you look the beta colors on this to me, too, I'm. Yeah, there, there's yeah. not much else that I can say about these other than please put one in my garage. What about you? I yeah. mean, I'm assuming you'd take one too. I mean, we, we either one of us oh, would take gosh, kind yes. of one oh, of good. anything. But... Uh, always, always. Well, I'm glad Ashley threw this one up here because I was like, please tell me you're going to show the pipe side of this. Um, so beautiful bike. I do love yeah. Beta. I love their commitment to two strokes. This red, white, and blue uh, livery is fantastic. This is such a gorgeous bike. I'm on board with you, Josh. I do love a trials bike. I've had a chance to ride trials bike myself. Um, I did a little desert riding on one, which seems maybe counterintuitive, but it was yeah. a fantastic way to desert ride. I love the suspension and the lightness of them is super, yeah. super good times. Um, I really, really enjoyed them. If I had $9,000 laying around, uh, I would sure. definitely put this on, put this on a wish list for sure. For right now, I will stick at my uh, used vintage trials bikes <laughs> and, and just enjoy right. them. But this style of riding, I do love. You're right. This is a ton of bang for your buck. If you have never oh, investigated yeah. trials riding, do yourself a solid and go click over to the Googles and go take a gander at it. Or I think Josh's talked trials bikes a handful of times on our previous Excellent episodes trials. so go check yeah go or yeah exactly so go check out some of those videos as well we are always out here on the youtube or on the facebook you can always search our back episodes and go look for some of these stories yourself yes. we try to cover a little bit of everything out here right i overseas road racing hydrogen hydrogen technology yeah at least i do at least i mix <laughs> it up every week i talk i go for everywhere from king of the baggers to hydrogen fuel cell technology like in a one week gap look at me go josh yeah dirt bike dirt bike dirt bike <laughs> yeah that's what i do but it's what, it's what we love about you, Josh. Keep it consistent, Thank my you. friend. Keep it consistent. So, anywho, we will be back next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have an awesome week. See you guys next week.